Hi guys, we're Amis and Kult, and today we're going to do a beat breakdown and show you our tips and tricks. Let's go! Sometimes we start with chords, sometimes we start with a bass line, it depends. Um, but for this song we started with the drums. It's very yeah. easy but it works, yeah. And then slowly start adding the textures underneath it. So usually like that's a, a typical approach of starting a song, but of course you want to build on top of that. So uh, when we got like the drums and the groove like very tight, we're going to start adding like simple chords. So for this one, we used a, uh, a road sound. With a little delay on top of it. And everybody is asking how I made this sound. <laughs> it's very easy, it's just a road with a good delay on it. It's literally like the standard uh, Ableton roads. This is like a typical starting point. Then of course you want to add a little bass line. So for the bass line, what we use is like a very typical thing in music production. We just select the lowest note of the chord progression and put that as the bass line. We use a, uh, a one-shot sample. This one is from Enlove, shout out to him. He's a very talented, very talented producer. It sounds like this, very low. It's a beautiful bass line. And after this, we started adding some more elements. Yes. So of course you wanna like uh, spice the roads up a little bit with like more sounds. Uh, so Layered. we added uh, a couple more layers that follow the exact same chords. For example, we have a filtered piano. As you can see on the EQ, we rolled off the low end and the high end, so it kind of sounds like a little bit of, yeah, muffled. Yeah, dull, breathing. mellow. Yeah. Just to give some space to the other sounds to breathe. And then a, a Labs presets. This one is called the uh, Piano yeah. Pad, the radio one, which is a beautiful pad. The bass line, drums. We added some guitar. So for this one, we added a little simple guitar, which doesn't play chords or anything. It's just like simple, uh, simple, yeah, simple guitar playing. It sounds like this. So so far, when you combine everything we explained so far, you get something like this. that's cool but you want to build on top of that even more yeah at least in our case our, our, our styles are really recognizable because of the ambience so we like to add some more yeah weird stuff so we added the grain pad yeah and uh, some like uh, sign things with the pitches that sounds really interesting together it's just granulated stuff with a lot of reverb and then we bounced it it sits perfectly on top of the chord progression. You don't recognize it, but if you left it out, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. And like little stuff like that, uh, which maybe when you solo it, it doesn't sound that special. But if you combine like a lot of those kind of layers, like put it low in the mix, then you eventually start uh, getting a beautiful soundscape. A little sine wave. With three with notes, some, reverse it. With some tape saturation in this case and some little delays. Uh, and it sounds like this. So then we have like the, the big one, which adds a lot in this case for this track, uh, which is the Grain Pass 2 stem. It sounds like this. And this is like a combination of a lot of different takes, like combined all together. Like our kind of lo-fi approach is a little bit different than most because like we really uh, we really work with a lot of layers and uh, and sound selection is very important for us. But we also want to uh, progress the track even further. We want to expand even further and add even more sounds. So we add like even a lot more like counter melodies on top of the piano, which sounds like this. These are things we made in the past with some design sessions. Yes. And then for the last, uh, the last track in this group, and this one is another Atmos layer. Combined with the other three. So like, like when you let this play, it's like a beautiful it's ambience. It's like an ambient soundscape for itself. It's a beautiful ambient soundscape. But we felt like this track it sounded proper, but we needed like one more 
like oh. a constantly playing melody. Let's call it like a main melody or something, uh, which Arthur made on, on, on his laptop. It's called Ha 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 <laughs> in this case, yeah. uh, which is a lapse preset. And what we did here is like a little delay automation uh, that we did here with the red dot, you as, as you can see over there. So like this little part, but when we add like the little delay automation and it set it on repitch and set it on repitch mode, it sounds beautiful because it like pitches up in a very unique and cool way. And when I enable it, it sounds like this. Yeah, this really makes the track, in my opinion. Yeah, just the kind of small details. Yeah, exactly. You you wouldn't notice it if you heard it like this, but it's yes. really noticeable in the track. Yeah, yeah. And in like a little rainforest or a little final crack or a little tape hiss. Yeah, it just fills up some space in the mix. Fills up the space in the mix. And also it's like a little some ear high, candy stuff. Yeah. It's like the listener is like, hey, this is nice. And then usually the last step of us is like adding little uh, transition effects. Yeah. Because for example, when you transition from the intro to the drop, then you usually want like a little, for example, like a, we, we call it like a whoosh. And then uh, it's like a little white noise sweep. So we also, we always do that from the intro to the drop and for the drop to the break yeah. and to the outro. Yeah. And that's how you make a track. See you guys soon.